function is correct so the button does what it's supposed to. To start, let's just tell the function to say hi when you press it. Type this command. I am going to remove the list for now so we can concentrate on the button. As you can see, the code is simple. You create a window and then you create a button. When the button is pressed, it goes to the command argument, looks for the name of the function. The name is call me. So the interpreter goes and looks for that name. Once he finds call me, it runs the command inside it. In this case, when we press the button, it will print hi. Let's run the command and see what happens. Notice how when we press the button, it prints hi in the interpreter. What if we quickly add another line that prints something else? I'm going to type this. Now, if we run the program, it will print two lines instead of one line. Let's try to run it. Notice how it prints out two lines. It's because we have two print commands in the function. I also want you to notice that everything inside the function is indented. Remember how the interpreter ignores the function at first and everything else inside the function as well. When you indent a line under the function, it means that it's inside the function and the interpreter ignores it until the function is called. For the sake of another example, let's create another button. We'll call this button Jimmy. Notice how I switched the text and the command. I did this on purpose. The first argument always has to be the parent or the window that the button resides in. After that, you just need to make sure you match up the key word with the right argument. As you can see, command still goes with the function, while text still goes with what you want to write on the button. Now, let's write a function for this button. Um, what should we make this button do? Oh, I know. Why don't we create a label? And we'll make the label say something like Jimmy Poo. We'll create a function like this. Now, if we press the button, a label will come out. Let's try to run it. You see how if we use print, it will print to the interpreter. But if we use a label, it goes directly onto the window. Now, why don't we change the color of the label by adding this argument? Now let's try to run the program. You see how when I press the button, the color of the label is now different. FG, in this case, stands for foreground. You see how it changes the color of the label? You might be wondering if you can change the color for the button the same way. Yes, you can. Let's try it. You see how the button now has white text when we run it. So if FG stands for foreground, 
Then does BG stand for background? You guessed the right again. You can change the color of the background as well. Let's try to add it to the button as well. Now let's try to run this program and you will see a different background. The point I want to make is that you can add many, many arguments to describe the perfect button you want. So where can you get a list of all the options you have to change? Well, you will be inside appendix section in the textbook. I will give you a list in it, obviously, and a description of what they do. So, today we have learned how to create buttons and make them do something. We learned how to create the text on the button as well as the color of the button. We also learned how to write functions that performs a set of instructions when you push the button. For your homework, yes, we have homework. I want you to program something like this. When you push the button, the list prints out a list of your friends. If you have any problem doing this exercise, make sure you check out the answer folder in this chapter. This is all the time we have for now. This is Che. Until next time.